chronic small bowel diarrhea can have associated lymphopenia. And what are the two conditions which you suspect in a patient who has chronic small bowel diarrhea with lymphopenia? These are intestinal lymphangiectasia and acquired immunodeficiency syndrome with malabsorption. They can have lymphocytosis. It may suggest tuberculosis. And they can have thrombocytosis. That means excess of platelet count. This occurs in celiac disease and inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, sorry, not tuberculosis typically. So, this can happen with celiac disease and inflammatory bowel disease. In fact, celiac patient and IBD patient, both ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease in the acute stage may have reversible hyposplenism which lead to actually increase in the platelet count. If somebody has chronic small bowel diarrhea with eosinophilia, suspect strongyloid hyperinfection, Though in some patient with hyperinfection due to strong eosinophilic eosinophilic response may not be there. In fact, eosinophilia tries to contain the parasite in the gut and absence of eosinophilia may be associated with a more severe and disseminated disease. And the second condition where small bowel diarrhea may be associated with eosinophilia is eosinophilic gastroenteritis. Now, let us look at our patient. Our patient had malabsorption of two unrelated elements. This patient also had other malabsorption such as calcium, potassium and so on. So, he had partial villus atrophy. We all other causes of malabsorption such as celiac disease, hypogamma globulinemia and giardia, they were absent. Therefore, we suspected that this patient has tropical sprue. So, hence we treated him with tetracycline, 500 mg thrice daily for one month, then 500 mg twice daily for another month. We gave him folic acid. And what we found is, look at this, his body weight went up from 49 kg to 70 kg. His stool frequency went down from 7 per day to 1 per day. And his desilose and fecal fat improved. Initial desilose was 0.2 gram, which is grossly abnormal, rather 0.28 gram. It became 0.9 gram, which is borderline to normal. His fecal sudan stain showed 46 fat droplet in the beginning. At the before treatment, it became 18 droplet, which is much reduction. So, therefore, we'll say this patient had tropical sprue. Now, this is a very important thing to remember. See, look at this figure. This is the normal duodenum where you get multiple valvuli conifantes. They are the important because they increase the surface area of the bowel. In fact, surface area of the bowel is increased by valvuli conifantes. Then, by the villi like this, and also, over each epithelial cell, there are multiple multivilli, like, microvilli like this. So, one is this valvulic conventis, they are increasing the surface area of the bowel. Second is, there is a finger-like projection of the villi which is increasing the surface area of the bowel. And third is, further each epithelial cell, like this is an epithelial cell, has multiple projection called microvilli. So, if you straighten the small bowel, truly speaking, it will be, the total area will be 400 square meter. This is very important. That increases the absorptive ability of the small bowel. So, in duodenal biopsy, we get an idea about that. Like duodenal biopsy, I'll show you later how we classify called Mars classification, typically used for celiac disease. But look at this patient duodenal biopsy. Actually, there is hardly any villi like this. But instead, this is flat. So this is actually partial to subtotal villus atrophy. Rather, this is subtotal villus atrophy. So this decreases the surface area of the bowel. Also, clinically, we can make out that whether this patient had only duodenal involvement or, or duodenal plus jejunal involvement or duodenal jejunal plus ideal involvement. We know that if the patient has evidence of malabsorption of iron and calcium and folic acid, like this patient had calcium malabsorption. 
so calcium malabsorption may mean that you know duodenum absorb folic acid calcium and iron the mnemonic is fci or food corporation of india so folic acid calcium and iron are absorbed from the duodenum so if you get malabsorption of these that means you know duodenum is involved on the other hand we know vitamin b12 and bile acid are absorbed from the ileum therefore you get a patient in whom you find vitamin b12 malabsorption for example subacute combined degeneration of the cord clinically then you know the ileum is also involved therefore you can say even clinically that what is the extent of the involvement is it from the duodenum to ileum now what is tropical sprue like finally we diagnose this patient having tropical sprue the reason is i'll tell you this patient has malabsorption of two unrelated substances he showed duodenal biopsy abnormality in the form of partial to subtotal villus atrophy three all other specific causes of malabsorption we excluded and four he responded to treatment directed against tropical sprue with folic acid tetracycline so therefore this patient had tropical sprue so what is the diagnostic criteria for tropical sprue patient patient presenting with overt symptom of malabsorption malabsorption of two unrelated substances abnormal small bowel mucosal histology exclusion of other causes of malabsorption and persistent or long term response to antibiotic and folic acid so tropical sprue can be epidemic or sporadic like this patient is having sporadic tropical sprue B professor v i mathan from cmc velour reported epidemic tropical sprue in the community so there is another entity called tropical enteropathy what are what are the differences between tropical sprue and tropical enteropathy tropical sprue is a symptomatic disease like our patient has chronic diarrhea feature some malabsorption so will not call him having tropical enteropathy he is having tropical sprue whereas tropical enteropathy is an asymptomatic problem if you do duodenal biopsy in people living in the uh, tropics they may have little blunting of the villi people have shown that the population of the western country for an example uk and population of india if you do duodenal biopsy the villus height is less in indian population at least on those earlier days and therefore this was called tropical enteropathy natural history tropical sprue is worsening condition because this is a disease and tropical enteropathy is just a subclinical change in the histology nutritional deficiency is common in tropical sprue but less common in tropical enteropathy because it is a subclinical condition migration to temperate zone may improve tropical sprue patient but tropical enteropathy may not improve and response to treatment with antibiotic like we gave to our patient usually there is an improvement with tropical sprue but not with tropical enteropathy now what are the thing in the history that you must note while dealing with a patient of chronic diarrhea family history very important because celiac disease crohn's disease they run in families abdominal surgery in the past very important because somebody can have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth due to blind loop syndrome or surgically created anastomosis between the large bowel and the small bowel history of drugs i will tell you in greater detail what are the drugs that cause actually chronic diarrhea but there are several antibiotic colchicine paramino salicylic acid phenamates and so on history of milk intolerance like our patient told sexual history and blood transfusion is very important because we all know aids patient can present with chronic diarrhea and obviously aids may result from blood transfusion or uh, sexual promiscuity did it start with acute diarrhea this is very important because if it started like an acute diarrhea it is less likely to be functional more likely to be organic though nowadays we know there is a condition called post infection ibs which start with acute diarrhea